Canterbury, Tuesday, December the 29th, 1170. Thomas Becket, Archbishop of England, is violently done to death in his own cathedral. His murder remains one of the most infamous events in British history. It was the final act of eight years of obsessive rivalry between Thomas Becket and his king, Henry II, who'd be remembered as one of the great English rulers, were it not for that one incident of sacrilegious violence. the Loire Valley in the heart of France. Here, in March 1133, a baby boy was born. His name was Henry Plantagenet. His father was Geoffrey of Anjou, the most powerful dukedom in central France. His mother was Matilda, daughter of the King of England. Henry was destined to be a French prince, but his mother had bigger ambitions for her infant son, to be the next King of England. In 1135, the English King, Henry's grandfather, died, but he did not name the young Henry Plantagenet as his successor. Instead, the English crown was seized by Stephen, the King's nephew. Matilda was outraged. She came to England, vowing to settle this family feud by force. 17 years of violent anarchy followed, years so violent that some chroniclers referred to them as the Age of the Antichrist. In 1142, when the young Henry was only nine, he went to England to join his mother in the fight against his cousins. He developed a taste for the soldier's Spartan life and an aversion to anyone being in command except him. It would take 10 years of strife and then the death of Henry's rival Stephen to remove all obstacles between Henry and the throne. He emerged as a battle-hardened young man, poised to become king. He was also a handsome bachelor in need of a wife. His eyes turned to France. Eleanor of Aquitaine came from a family of minstrels and warriors. She was directly descended from the Emperor Charlemagne. One of the richest women in Europe, she was unhappily married to the high-minded King Louis of France. Favoring the company of more passionate men, Eleanor declared, I'm married to a monk, not a king. By the age of 30, she'd failed to produce a son, and in 1152, Louis divorced her. Suddenly, Eleanor was hot property. Her contemporaries describe her as lascivious. I think we'd say she was sexy. But perhaps her most alluring asset was the fact that she possessed the dukedom of Aquitaine. Henry wasted no time. Within eight weeks of her divorce, he'd married her, and it seemed like the perfect union. He gained extensive territory in France. She gained a virile young husband, about to be crowned King of England and the most potent man in Europe. Henry was crowned in 1154. His court remained in France, but his kingdom, which stretched from the edge of the Pyrenees to the Scottish borders, was so large that he was always on the move. It was said that he never sat still other than to eat.
Eleanor was very much in love with her young husband and travelled with him when she could. She bore him eight children, including five sons. But although she shared his bed, she didn't share his power. Henry never allowed his clever and fickle queen to have a say in what he did. The infighting of his youth had taught him to play his cards close to his chest. To Eleanor's dismay, there was only one person her husband came to trust, an Englishman called Thomas Beckett. Beckett was a merchant's son who'd worked his way up in English society. While the frugal king lived like a commoner, the self-made Beckett loved ceremony and splendor. He entertained foreign visitors on the king's behalf, a duty usually reserved for the queen. Henry's immediate problem as king was the terrible state of England. The war between his relatives, lasting 17 long years, had left the country in poverty and chaos, dominated by thieves, mercenaries and robber barons. Henry called on Becket to sort out the mess. He promoted him to Chancellor and gave him the task of ridding the land of all enemies. It was a position of absolute trust. With Becket's help, Henry imposed his steely grip on the country. By 1160, he'd pulled down over a thousand castles and expelled disloyal nobles and criminals. His message was clear. Support the king or get out of England. <laughs> 